Jimenez, LA Jimenez, and my topic is positive enforcement for justice policies. My main claim is justice policies provide significant advantages in professional environments. They promote modesty, professionalism, it reduces judgment and false accusations, and I'm going to get into it. What a person wears expresses their self-appreciation, in other words, modesty. The First Amendment states we have freedoms concerning religion, expression, assembly, and the right to petition. Basically saying we can do whatever we want, we can wear whatever we want, we can say whatever we want. However, young women showing too much skin and dressing inappropriately or provocatively is an inappropriate way to express herself in a place where she said, in a place, if she were at school or something, that she should be focusing on her academics. According to Kosher Casual, an online organization that promotes dress code merchandise for schools and camps, states that dress codes have proven to increase student achievement by encouraging students to concentrate more on their studies and less on their wardrobe. Based off this evidence, we can easily infer that when uh, high school students or even anybody, when they start not worrying about what they're going to wear the next day, their academics skyrocket and they're successful. Uh, clothing affects future personality and how a person carries himself. Teens don't realize what they do or even what they wear now affects their future. According to John Wiley and Sons, a global publisher for educational research, research states that authors found that the clothes made by young people are closely bound to their self-concept and are made both as means of self-expression and as a way of judging the people in situations they face. Evidence was also found that clothing has a function and role fulfillment, making the wearer more confident and capable. Overall, clothing can be used as an essential tool in the lives of teenagers. All teens care about right now is their, is their reputation and being able to fit in. And when they start realizing that they're not fitting in based on their wardrobe, that's when their self-esteem goes down and they're not able to focus on their academics. Inappropriate attire indicates to an employer that you can't positively represent their company and it means you won't get the position that you want. My second uh, topic is professionalism. Dress codes create a sense of professionalism. Professionalism is a way of how a person is socially organized, specifically in the way they present themselves and the way they dress. High school students go to school seven hours a day, five days a week, it totals up to 40 hours a week. And basically when you're in high school, that's your job. So you should dress appropriately as if it were a real job and you're getting paid for it. Because it's kind of like, you're gonna have a job in the future, so might as well prepare for it now. People may dispute saying, well, oh, what I wear doesn't have an effect on me because the person never met me or, or they never talked to me. Well, that's false because Linda Blair, clinical psychologist and author of Straight Talking, states it only takes seven seconds for us to judge another person when we first meet them. And say you were at a job for a law firm and you want to be a lawyer. The first seven seconds are you just saying, hi, my name is, and right there they, they start making an infer of how they think you're going to act just based on your appearance and what you're dressed like. Teens need to practice this concept for future work, for future in the workforce. Which apparel, is, which apparel is appropriate and which is not? The appropriate attire could influence your workplace, even if the person were prepared mentally. On the outside, it shows the employer you are not serious. My third claim is reduce judgment and false accusations. Appropriate apparel can reduce judgment and false accusations. A person may have the total package: education, the ability to speak well, but lacking one small, one small subject, the ability to dress well. Diana Wicks, chief editor of Demand Media, states that false accusation is a form of defamation that results in an injury to the reputation of someone's character. False accusations can affect a person's good being and give a negative impression put on them. What you're wearing provides people with the right impression, but it's not always the one a person wants them to make. Um, I was a high school senior, and my teacher told me that, oh, we're going to practice an interview, so dress as if it were a real interview. I walk in thinking my apparel was perfectly fine. He pulled me aside. He's like, what are you wearing? What? He's like, this is inappropriate. This is inappropriate. If you were to wear this at a real job, you would not get it. And coincidentally, now he's my boss. So I've taken the skills that he's taught me to now my workplace. And if I were to move on to another job, I would use those skills at the next job. In conclusion, dress codes have often been looked at as a nuisance and people not being able to express themselves. You could express yourself in an appropriate manner. Following dress code policies will positively impact one's life by being modest, professional, as well as reducing judgment and avoiding false accusations. My goal in this argument is to persuade the audience to agree that dress code policies should not be abolished, as well as should be taken appropriately, because it will follow success in one's future based on simple accusations on how a person dresses.
All right, and Alita, the uh, proposition appears to have the uh, preview uh, built into it, so that's a little complicated. Uh, and because you've got a term in that that also is almost a value argument in and of itself, it makes it a little harder to focus on the factual issues that you're talking about. Inappropriate is definitely an evaluative term, and uh, I think... Uh, you're probably going to find that the main argument that the the respondent's going to be presenting has to do with context. What constitutes appropriate and inappropriate is going to vary from context to context, and that's not necessarily going to uh, be something that uh, is going to be understood by everybody. That there might be a dress code, and it's efficient in a particular industry. I think you need to show that the dress codes in particular industries have the benefits that you're talking about. As it is, it's a little generic in the way it's being applied here. I did think that you signposted your supporting points in the body of the speech pretty well. Uh, you've got uh, good background that you're trying to present, although I do think some of the terminology is a little confusing. I'm still not sure what this false accusation is. You had a quote on it, and I heard it, and I still don't understand what what that means except that somebody might get a false impression of what kind of person you are and that I understand why it's a false accusation uh, that's just a distracting term I think and th so that's one of those things that I think uh, creates a little bit of a problem for you uh, the the notion that dress codes have a benefit in an academic context I think you've got a quote that makes a general statement about it. However, it's undermined a little bit by the fact that it comes from an organization that supplies the kinds of clothes that you know, uh, fit a dress code. So it's like my saying, you know, dress codes are great because uh, they help students do better. So come to my store and buy the clothes that are required by your dress code. Well, you know, I don't know what proof they have for that other than it benefits them to say that sort of thing. So I think you need some other outside data on that. You, you mentioned that student achievement goes up, so let's see some data that shows that student achievement goes up, and I think that's kind of missing there. Uh, the role fulfillment stuff is uh, maybe an explanation about why people don't want to uh, adhere to a dress code, but it also seems to be a reason why somebody ought to adhere to a dress code because you want to fulfill the image of the job that you're applying for. Um, so that point seems to be cutting both ways. I thought you did a nice job speaking to us, although sometimes it felt like you were reading and, and rushing a little bit, but there's a good variety in your voice, and I did think that you had a lot of enthusiasm when you're presenting your argument. At the end, there's a good summary, although you, you veer a little bit into the area of making some policy claims, so you want to be careful about that also. All right, thank you.